One of the most common techniques used for estimating or to improve the quality of your uh, cost estimates is the three-point estimation technique. We're going to see this again in scheduling because they can also be applied when it comes to estimating time uh, as well. So there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can use the basic three-point technique and then we'll, we'll talk about a, a more sophisticated use of the per technique. Uh, but they've all used the same fundamental basis, which is three estimates based on the most optimistic, the most pessimistic, and the most likely. So, the you know, the most optimistic, obviously, you're anticipating the, those unknowns to go your way to, um, it, it's a, a favorable outlook. Uh, and because everything goes your way, everything breaks your way, uh, it is a, an optimistic perspective and, and it's going to be the least cost. Now, despite saying it is the most optimistic, it is supposed to be a re realistic outcome. You, you shouldn't be so optimistic that you're delivering an estimate which is, you know, would never ever happen. Similarly, the most pessimistic is where you assume unfavorable outcomes on a number of things. And you think it is the a realistic worst case scenario, uh, whereas the most optimistic is the realistic best case scenario. Now, the two of them, somewhere in between, is going to be the most likely outcome that you're going to have. And so you're going to have to estimate the, the, the most likely. Now, this you needs your judgment and, and everything else, and it's probably the estimate that you would have delivered unhindered before you force yourself to be pessimistic or optimistic. It, it, you may be tempted to do the two and then just average them to come up with it, but it's rare that the, the most likely is going to be dead set in the middle between the most optimistic and the most pessimistic because how things sh uh, break favorably or unfavorably have greater impact on one side than the other. So all of these estimate values, like I say, should be realistic. So if we were to draw them out, so the typical three point triangle uh, as normal method, uh, we have our optimistic, we have our uh, pessimistic and we have our most likely and they're all weighted exactly the same and it can then be estimated as a triangle is normal uh, I don't see that as often where we're going to go into uh, deep probabilities if we're going to need that kind of fidelity we're probably going to go with this next technique which is uh, the the PERT technique so PERT, which typically uses a beta distribution, I, I certainly have seen some writings where it also uses a normal distribution. I've only ever used it with a beta distribution. Um, <clears throat> and it also overweights the most likely. Uh, so the estimate then, it, again, uses an optimistic and a pessimistic and a most likely, but you see by the formula with the four, the coefficient in front of the M, it, it weights the most likely uh, fairly significantly. And we see the formula here for the standard deviation. And the nice thing about that is that now we can use our confidence levels and our distribution in order to uh, estimate our probabilities and outcomes, uh, which we didn't have before. So let's look at, at an example using three-point estimation in PERT. Uh, so again, we're going to be looking at task B. We looked at task B earlier in the, the budgeting uh, video. So when we estimate it, we see optimistically uh, $3,000, pessimistically $4,500. Uh, but our most likely uh, estimate, we say, is uh, $3,300. So what we want to do then is to use the triangular distribution to estimate uh, what we should be using. Uh, and then also use uh, the PERT distribution to, to do the same thing. So using our triangle distribution, 
we see it's an unweighted formula. So uh, optimistic plus our uh, most likely plus our pessimistic, uh, add them together, take the mean by dividing by three, and we get a estimate uh, for our uh, task B, our cost for task B of $3,600 using the triangle method. Now for PERT, Again, remember it's that weighted average, so we have the coefficient of 4 before the mean, so we have our optimistic plus 4 times our most likely, uh, plus our um, pessimistic, and now we have to divide by 6 because we have the 4 before the uh, most likely, and we come up with a slightly different answer as our best guess, or best estimate, uh, for the task of 3450. Now, because we've used the PERT, uh, the Program uh, um, Estimate and Review Technique, uh, we can also calculate the standard deviation. So we take our uh, pessimistic, subtract our optimistic, divide by six, and we see that we have a standard deviation of $250. Now, that would break out to give us probabilities of achieving th those various bounds. And so we would expect that if we're within one standard, that the probability is, is we'll be within one standard deviation uh, of our estimate. Uh, so above $3,200 and below $3,700. Or if we want needed a higher confidence, then we would have to extend those bounds uh, out a little bit to get to 95 and a half or 99.7% confidence uh, that our estimate would be within those uh, bounds. So three-point estimates can be very effective, especially in circumstances where experience is lacking. Uh, to be fair, they add to the conversation is to remember they have to be realistic, optimistic and pessimistic outcomes. Uh, and to include this in your spreadsheet, in your work breakdown structure, it's a couple more columns. It's a conversation which probably should be happening. The thinking should be happening. So, so personally, uh, I think the, the PERT uh, approach to three-point estimates is, is something that I would almost always do for uh, most estimates that are, aren't, uh, you know, like a, a contract estimate where you are, actually have a, a, you know, a submission by a company that, that wants to do the work and that type of thing. So if, if there's at all any uh, variation I think the three-point estimate is so easy to program into your spreadsheet, so easy to integrate into your processes. Uh, it's one that I think is well worth doing.